So with Canva, I know I've done quite a few tutorials, but in the last few months, they've actually uploaded and added a few new tools and tricks to help make your life easier. So I thought I'd just do a quick review of some of those that I find the most useful. Hello, agentpreneurs, and welcome back to the Daily List Report. Really excited, as always, to have Ashley, our very own Ashley, back on the show today, talking about a bunch of new features in Canva. Of course, while you're here, please, please, please consider subscribing to this channel. Click that little bell so you're notified of all future episodes. And if you think this content is relevant and helpful and useful, please consider sharing it with some of your agent colleagues, agent friends around the country. We would very much appreciate that. So today, Ashley is gonna talk about a bunch of new Canva features. She's gonna cover how to upload your own audio, tidy up, which is an auto alignment feature, how to add lines to any design, real-time collaboration, and so much more. So without further ado, here's Ashley. Hi, agentpreneurs, I'm Ashley, and today I'm back to go over a little bit more of Canva tools for you guys. As you can see, I've actually got some Facebook post templates up here that I just thought I would use to demonstrate a few of these new features. So the first feature is actually having to do with inserting lines into your design. So previously, if you wanted to add a line like this one, this template already has a line in the template. But let's say you didn't have one and you wanted to add one, you'd have to go to elements, search line, and, oh, I've already done that. And as you can see, you can choose from any of those, but it can just be tedious having to look through all of these different line types and you're not really sure what you want. Well, here you go. This is a really easy trick. All you have to do is find the L on your keyboard. So once you're clicked onto a page or a template, click the L key on your keyboard and a line just appears. I'm gonna show you again because I feel like this is magical. Ready? Boom, a line just appears. I think it's amazing. And then of course you can reposition it and move it. You can resize by dragging these in, and I love the pink guides help you. So if I wanted to match it to the line below, I could do that. And then if you wanted to change the color or the weight of the line, I'm you know you can make it really thick or a lot thinner to match the other one. I'm not going to get it perfect, but that's all right. And then you can actually change the type of line. So you can add end caps, you can make it rounded, you could make it dashed or dotted, whatever you think looks best. I'm going to keep it matching format wise and then you can of course add end caps and that could be an arrow or a square or whatever shape you find most pleasing and make sure you want to match it you can do both and then when you click away you have your line and it's beautiful and it's simple and to me that's the best part of canva so i just wanted to show that quick tip with you i don't know if it's a big deal maybe it's just me but i found it really helpful really easy and it just really shows that canva's working hard to make our lives as users easier so Good on Canva. The next uh, update I'm gonna talk about is the format paint effect. Now, for those of you who aren't familiar with format painting, it's basically if you like the style, color, size of a particular text, like let's say I really like this style and I wanna apply it to a different design without having to copy and paste and retype. I just, I just want it to look exactly like this somewhere else. What I'm gonna do is you're gonna click on the text itself and up here you're going to see this little paint roller copy button. When you click it, it will fill in. So that's how you know you're ready to paste. And you'll see this little paint icon following you around the screen. So let's say I find a different design where I'm like, mm, where would this style work better? Ooh, I want to try it here. All you have to do is click and it's pasted. So now you can see the font change, the style change, the size change, and the color actually change to match. So it's only on this text box. I'd have to repaint for both of these, this is all grouped together. Um, but that's just a quick way to format paint. And as you can see, I've pasted, so that's now empty. Now, if I decided that I liked this one and I wanted to take that all the way up here, format paint, and it changes, you could see it dramatically changes the size and the color and the font. So I'm gonna actually undo because I liked the way they were before. Um, but that's just a great way to demonstrate your format painting. So then um, another, quick effect that I wanted to show you is actually for text. So let's say I'm clicking on this and it doesn't seem super legible. It's not super easy to read because it's a white text on a colored background. So as you can see, I actually think I already had these applied. But so when you look at it here, it definitely is blending into that background of that photo. You have a beautiful listing photo with some nice text. And it's really hard to read and that's frustrating. So what I advise is clicking on the text, going to effects, and then trying out some of these different effects that Canva has input to make things more readable. So you can add a shadow 
and you can definitely make that shadow more or less offset, direction blur, anything you want. You could change the color if you want a dark shadow or a colored shadow, anything you like. For me, for this particular example, I don't think this is the easiest to read, so I'm actually gonna go with the lift. This is my favorite effect that they have for the text because it gives it just a little bit of that subtle back shadow that really pops the text off of the image. So I actually find this one the most helpful, especially for readability, but you also have hollow, splice, which is kind of like the hollow plus a shadow, echo, which is multiple shadows, you have your neon, this glitch one that I basically never use, but if you know you wanna play around, go for it. And then this curve text. And I think the curve text is really, really cool. Um, if you actually go and move it, you're gonna see that there's a circle. And so what that's for is if you ever wanted to match a top curve and a bottom curve, cause you can invert the curve, then you can create a full circle of text and that's just brand new capability. So I thought that was really cool. So really quick, just to show you what that inverted text looks like, if you go here, you can see you can make that circle much wider if you want a wider curve, or you can invert it so that it goes the other way. And then that way, if you were ever trying to line up two curved sets of text, you could complete that circle and line it up properly. So I just thought that was a really cool way to do it. You can also eliminate the curve. I'm actually gonna go back to the lift and show you just what that looks like. If I click here and put the lift, um, it's very subtle, but I feel like it does make a difference. And Maybe, you know, it's totally up to you if you create a design. There's a little bit here that still kind of blends in. But to me, this is easier to read. And so that's just what those text effects are for. So the next uh, update feature that I want to show you is the tidy up feature. Now, this one's a little challenging. So I'm actually going to go down to this post that I was messing around with and trying to create a few days ago. And this is actually where I discovered the tidy up feature, because as you can see, there's a lot of check marks and then there's different texts that have to go across from the, te the text boxes. Um, so when you try to line all of these up, right? Like let's say I'm trying to do this manually, you know, you have these guidelines that make it somewhat easier, but it can be really tedious and can take a long time. So let's say I just wanted to create a new row of check boxes. Instead of doing, you know, one at a time and trying to line them up like this and make sure it's all exactly correct. Instead, I can just copy paste a bunch, put them, near each other, it doesn't even have to be anything close, right? Like this, I would never leave it like this, this looks terrible. But let's say I had it like this, and I'm like, okay, I need that to look way better. <laughs> I'm gonna drag and highlight all of these. I'm gonna go up to position, and then you're gonna see that it has this new space evenly column. And this is only if you have multiple items selected. But with a shape or an object that are all the exact same size, both vertically and horizontally, right? So these are squares, so this works perfectly. I'm gonna click tidy up. And that's going to space it evenly, both vertically and horizontally. And as you can see, it just made a beautiful line that totally matches. And now I can move this wherever I want. I know that it's gonna stay put. I can make it bigger and smaller. I can size everything, expand them or make them smaller. And then I can also group them so that then if I ever wanna move them as one unit, they're not gonna get messed up. But even if they did, all you have to do is click a tidy up button. Now, the one thing is that that's not the same with text. So let's say I'm moving these text um, boxes around and I want them lined up, but the tidy up button is not going to work the same on text because each of these are a different length and so the vertical and horizontal alignment isn't going to look like the checkboxes does. It's not going to ma match exactly. So it's good to kind of know which elements you can use and which ones you can't. So again, remember you can either drag and drop a box to select multiple things, or if you already have a few objects selected, you can simply hold the shift button and then click on any of the objects you want. And that's good if you have a background shape or something that makes it hard to just drag and select everything. Sometimes that happens. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to position and for this example, I'll show you, if I do horizontally, it makes it all bizarre. That is not what I want at all. So I'm gonna undo with a Command Z, and I'm actually gonna just hit vertical. And as you can see, that definitely spaces them out vertically. It doesn't align them perfectly. But this way, all I have to do is drag and use those guidelines to just simply line them up like this. And let's say, okay, oops, I got it out of line. That wasn't quite what I wanted. Now I can just re-highlight them all again and go back to position, vertically realign. That one fixed itself because I know I messed up. And there you go. And then all you have to do is just find these. And these are not grouped, but let's say I highlight. You just re-line re them up to make sure that you are happy with them. 
And there you go. That's what it will look like. And that's how you make everything tidy, neat, and organized. So just remember it's the position and then you go to the space evenly section and only use vertical with text. Don't try to tidy it up because it's gonna go really bizarre, but don't worry if you mess up, just command Z and redo. Um, but with any sort of shape or any sort of uniform line or table that you're trying to create, tidy up is a game changer. So I just wanted to share that one with you. And then two other of note, uh, one is just to know that Canva now operates as Google Docs does with real time collaboration. So those of you who used to share a design and then not be able to work on it while someone else was on your team, that days of that are over. You can now share a Canva image or design with anyone on your team and you can both work on it simultaneously. And then the last update is just really quick with uploads. Um, you used to not be able to add your own audio. Well, Canva's changed that. So you can actually upload your own images, videos, and audio, which I find to be a really great tool. So now you can just upload your own audio, which I find to be a really great tool. And I love to use this just because at times I have something very specific I wanna add, whether it be a presentation or a certain post, you know, you have your hype song or maybe you wanna add some applause or a specific ringtone or anything to any of your designs. Well, previously Canva would only let you use their music library, which to me, I at times found helpful, but sometimes limiting. So now I just wanted to point out that you are welcome to upload your own audio by dragging it or just clicking upload media. So any sort of song, if you have your hype song or anything that you really enjoy, you can totally add that in uh, and have the freedom to make your designs your own, even with music and audio. So that's what I have for you today. That's been the latest Canva updates over the last few months. I will actually be making a future video on a few different Canva features. These aren't exactly updates, but they are kind of a content planner. There's a Canva Live, which is an interactive presentation tool. And there's also Canva apps, which make it easier to publish and schedule your posts directly onto Facebook and LinkedIn and those uh, social media websites for you so that you don't have to do it all manually. So I'll be going over some of those features in future videos. So definitely keep an eye out. And as always, just thank you to Randy for having me back on the show. I really enjoy it. And I hope everyone has a wonderful weekend. Thanks, Agentpreneurs. Well, there you have it. Ashley, thank you so much for coming on the show, taking time out of your busy schedule to share these tips and tricks with all of our agentpreneurs out there. We all appreciate you very, very much. All right, everybody, that's it for today. Until tomorrow, be safe, be healthy, be happy. We'll see you soon. Bye.